One of the most stubborn muscle groups many guys struggle to build is their calves. We can all think of a guy who has a massive upper body and even really well-built quads and hamstrings, but still has small, skinny calves. Does this mean they've been skipping calf exercises? Probably not. But they may have accepted the fact that their calves won't be as big as everything else and they don't train them as effectively as possible. Big mistake. This video will be a comprehensive breakdown of building bigger calves based on scientific research and practical experience. We'll cover three of the biggest reasons your calves will never grow if you keep making these mistakes. But if you fix these, calf gains are on their way. But before we get into the details, it's essential to understand that consistent training, tracking progress, and progressive overload is the foundation of any muscle's growth. Let's start with the anatomy of the calf muscles. The gastric gastrocnemius lateral head and medial head are the thicker muscles in the upper part of the calf below the knee. Most people see these muscles as the two primary calf muscles. We will discuss the soleus, which is the lower part of the calf between the upper region of the calf and the ankles, later in this video. Let's get into the three main reasons your calves will never grow. Number one, not using the right variety of exercises. The only way to know what good mixes of calf exercises are is to understand what each exercise does, so let's get into it. Studies have shown that calf exercises performed in a straight leg position activate the lateral head and medial head better than the seated position. As mentioned previously, the medial and lateral head are thicker muscles in the upper part of the calf. There are several examples of calf raises done in a straight leg position. The first and most common is the standing calf raises in a calf raise machine. This setup typically involves shoulder pads and your feet on an elevated surface. Two other straight leg calf raises are on the Smith machine with a barbell along your traps and seated in a leg press with your legs straight and the balls of your feet on the bottom of the leg press machine platform. A not so effective variation is holding dumbbells since you're limited by how much weight you can carry, but this can work nonetheless. A variation you want to experiment with is foot positioning during the calf raise. Adjusting the direction of where your toes point can further target the lateral or medial heads, whereas toes pointed in causes greater lateral activation. So if you want to target specific parts of your calves, try varying your foot position. Next is to perform calf raises in the bent leg position. This variation is best done in a seated position where your knees are bent at 90 degrees. The bent leg position emphasizes the soleus. The soleus is a powerful muscle in the back part of your lower leg. It runs from just below the knee to the heel and is involved in standing and walking. Your calf training should combine exercises from both straight leg and bent leg positioning. Now that you have a framework for exercise selection, it's easier to mix and match movements. Number two, not using different techniques to grow. Another major reason your calves will never grow is performing calf exercises with a variety of training techniques. But before we get into more advanced methods, let's make sure you're not using poor form on calf raises. Since the range of motion on the calf raise is so short, it makes paying attention to details all the more critical. Making mistakes here can really hinder your calf growth. So here are a few tips to get your form perfect. First and foremost, there are two things you wanna do on every single rep, except in specific cases that we'll discuss later. One is squeezing your calves at the very top, and two is causing a deep stretch in your calves at the bottom. This is how you should train your calves 95% of the time, which means no more short range of motion or bouncing through the exercises using momentum. So the two things to keep in mind are squeeze and stretch. The other 5% of the time, you perform the exercises quickly to maximize calf swelling. Lifters consider this a pump or burnout set, and it's typically performed as a final set. Another underrated calf training technique is the three second pause reps at the bottom of each repetition. At the bottom of each rep, hold the stretch under load for a full three count. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. It might sound easy, but when your calf is on fire, it's easy to shorten your count. So next time you train calves, try these pause reps. You can even program these into your training block and do them on all sets for eight weeks and see how the growth is. We'll discuss this in the next point. The type of muscle growth that results in the loaded stretch position is different than when in the contracted position. So stretching at the bottom might be the change you need. This is a big shift from the bouncing many do and increases the time spent squeezing at the top and stretching at the bottom of each rep. Since calves are also endurance muscles because they need to support continuous activity like walking, using a heavy load to train calves is beneficial. An underutilized method is overloading the calves with heavy negatives on the calf race machine. This is where you go very heavy on the calf raise and use momentum to get the weight up and control the negative. This will load the calves in a way you likely haven't felt before and will stimulate new growth. Number three, not properly programming your training. Since calves are smaller muscles that require less recovery time than larger muscles, training them three to five times a week is a good idea if you want them to grow. If you're training calves one to two times per week, 
That may not be enough frequency if your muscles haven't been developing from that. It's time to up the days per week you train your calves. Also, using different rep ranges, 8 to 10 and 12 to 15 can be beneficial, while focusing on adding more weight and reps over time. Here's an example of how to program your calf training with a higher frequency. Monday, standing calf raises, four sets of eight to 12 reps. Seated calf raises, four sets of eight to 12 reps. Tuesday, leg press calf raises, three sets of 12 to 15 reps with second pause reps. Thursday, standing calf raises, four sets of six to eight reps with heavy negatives. Saturday, seated calf raises for three sets of 12 to 15 reps with second pause reps. Do you see how mixing up the calf exercises with various exercises, rep ranges, and loads is more than most people do for calves? Give this a try and your calves are guaranteed to grow. Be patient with your calf growth. Muscle protein synthesis in calf muscles after resistance training is significantly lower than other muscle groups. Therefore, it's essential to be consistent and track progress with your calf training. This includes measurements and progress pictures. You may be making gains and not even realize it. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll genuinely help out the channel. If your training and nutrition are in order, be sure to check out my science-based supplement line. Each product was created using scientifically proven ingredients, all clinically dosed and guaranteed to produce results. And right now you can get 25% off your entire order plus free shipping by using the coupon code MONSTER at checkout. So head over to musclemonsters.com supplements or click the link in the description. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.